Hey guys, Tapan Sharma here. It's been a while since I haven't uploaded any videos, but I'm back with uh, another tutorial series. And in this series, we'll be implementing the data tables using Vue.js and Laravel. So in the previous one, we implemented some features uh, using Laravel and uh, using Laravel and Livewire. Uh, so we'll be implementing all of those features along with some extra ones, which I'll be showing you in, later in this video. So we'll be doing all those features functionalities using Vue.js and so let's talk about what are the features that we'll be building here if you are new uh, or you uh, if you haven't watched the laravel and live data table series then uh, let's talk uh, let's talk about what we what are the features that we'll be doing here so the first feature is the pagination feature as you can see we are displaying 10 records at a time and the data are loaded in without any page refreshes as you can see and i can also select the per page value here so if i select 20 then 20 records are displayed and we'll be also be implementing the feature filter by class feature so each student belongs to a certain class in a section so if i go ahead and select class one here then all the students students belonging to class one are displayed as you can see here and if i also select section a then only the students belonging to class one and section a are displayed here so let's remove this filter and we'll be also be implementing the search functionality here so if i type in doctor and hit enter then all the words containing doctor are filtered so are searched and displayed here so we'll be implementing the multi-column searching here so if i type in doctor that means it is uh, currently searching uh, this keyword in student's name email address and phone number so we'll be implementing the multi-column searching here and what else what we'll be doing here and yeah one more cool thing we'll be also be implementing the sort which functionality here which we missed in the live word series so if i click on student's name then the data are sorted by and sorted in ascending order if i click again then the data is uh, displayed in descending order uh, so deleting multiple single records this will be also be discussed in the video so we'll be so we'll also be implementing deleting single records and multiple records so if i go ahead and click on this button then we'll be showing a confirmation dialog and if i click on ok then we'll show a switch toaster notification that the student has been deleted and that gets deleted from our database as well and we'll be implementing this multiple column multiple record selection so if i i can also select all of these records displayed in this page and we get a menu saying you have currently selected 10 items do you want to select all and if i click on select all then all of the data are selected as you can see the state is maintained here and with these records i can do what, uh, whatever action i like like deleting and exporting these uh, to the excel file or deleting this so we'll be implementing all of these features using vue.js and laravel so we uh, will get to learn a lot of things in this series so in the next video we'll be talking about the setup what we what are the things that we need to do and we'll also be implementing the pagination in the first part so without any further delays let's get started so let's start by talking about our uh, setup here so what i've done is i have a fresh installation of laravel and i have also defined a few models here for classes sections and student so each student belonging to a certain class in a section so if we go ahead and check our migration files as you can see we have a column called name for a class and under sections we have class id belonging to so each section belongs to a certain class and name for that section and we have students table so each student belongs to a certain class and section and we have the name email address and phone number for that speci specific students and i have also defined a few seeders uh, for classes sections and students so classes seeder has class 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Section seeder has section A and section B for each class. That is class 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 will have section A and B. And students seeder, I have created a factory for the students which will create 50 records. So if we go ahead and check out 
our students factory then you can see we have name email phone number address class id and section id so for the class id and section id what we are doing here is we are randomly defining a class id between one and five and for the section id what we are doing is we are querying the section model where the class id is this class id and we'll get the first record and we'll set it to the section id and maybe one more thing that we need to do here is this will get the model so we need to define the section id and the id okay this will work now let's go ahead and migrate our database so i have already defined a database if i created a database and defined now in an env file what i'm gonna do here is i'll just do php artisan migrate fresh and i also want to run the seed so our migration has been completed so if you go ahead and check our database as you can see we have class one two three four five sections a and b for each class and for the students we have 50 records containing uh, all the necessary data along with the specific class and section id so this is working fine and the next thing okay let me just also show the students.blade.php file i have uh, defined a backend folder which consists of students.blade.php and this is this consists of all the markup that we need in order to develop the data tables so if we go ahead and check our browser you can see that we are displaying this data tables here so we'll be replacing all these with our da dynamic data fetching all the records from our database and we'll be implementing everything so our next step that we need to do is let's go to laravel ui and we'll install this package in order to install the view so we'll be using laravel ui in order to install view so i'll just copy this and is that in a command line hit enter and i'll be right back once this finishes installing laravel ui has been successfully installed and our next step is to create the scaffolding for view so let's go ahead and copy and paste that here so view scaffolding has been done and our next step is I'll just quickly install the npm run the npm install and npm run dev and be right back so i have successfully executed the npm install command and let's go ahead and run the npm run dev hit enter and it finished but we need to run mix again so what we can now actually do is run again npm run dev and this time it will compile successfully so it will give an error for the first time so keep that in mind and the compilation has been successful so now let's go ahead and in our students.blade.php what we can do is in order to test our app what we can do is since we have a component since we have an example component and it is registered as example component in our app.js what we can actually do is in our students.blade.php let's keep that let's call that example component save that and let's go ahead and reload our browser okay one more thing that we need to do is let's go ahead and we need to define an id of app in our main root element so okay this is done and the next thing that we need to do is let's go to the master.blade.php and on the bottom we need to we also need to call the app.js file since this is the file that is actually so in our public js app.js this is the file that is actually uh, get compiled to we need to call that app.js file js with js and app.js save that let's go ahead and reload our browser once again and this time Vue.js is detected as you can see we are seeing the example component here 
and in our view tab okay i don't see that view tab here so in order to use the pagination feature uh, first let's go ahead and define the routes for this so what we need to do is let's go to the routes and api.php and define a route student controller class and on the index page index function so let's go to the student controller and define uh so here what i want to do is i want to get all the students and in here we'll be using api resources to format our data so let's go ahead in our terminal and create a resource name it student resource and maybe we also need to provide a i don't remember okay we don't need it maybe okay let's create that the resource has been created so in our resources student resource what we are going to do here is let's customize this a little bit so we'll be sending the name as this name so the reason we are doing this here is that i want to display the class and section for that specific student so i want to format that and also format the created at date so here the name the email address phone number and section so this section and name so we haven't defined the relation yet the class will be this class name so now what we need to okay we also need to send the id so don't forget to send the student id so this will be needed when we are looping in the looping to each of the students using for loop in Vue.js. So this ID will be the unique identifier for each data. Now let's go to the student model in our student.php. Let's define two functions, two relations. So the first will be classes. Return this belongs to classes class and we also need to specify the foreign key since we have different table uh, different model name and the different foreign key so we need to specify that and for this section will be okay i think we can actually define this as class and we want to return this belongs to section class and we don't need the foreign key here so in our student controller since we are getting all the students then i want to return the student resource collection with the value of students okay now let's go ahead and test this out so in our api.php when we hit the slash api slash students route we want to go to the student controller class on the index function so in the student controller what we are doing is we are fetching all the students and what we can actually do here is we can also uh, perform the eager loading so we i want to get all the students along with their class and section and i want to get these records okay so let's go ahead and test this on our browser so what we can actually do is we can go here and append an api slash students so okay we are getting all the data so i should use actually use postman but it's fine it's fine for now let's go ahead and now display this records here so let's define a new component vue.js component that will be called as students index so okay we can define that in the components folder itself it's up to you where you want to define you can actually create a different folder for each student a different folder for students and another folder for another model so that makes it quite easy and students index dot view so this is be this will be our view file and first let's go ahead and register this in our app.js 
what i'll do is i'll just copy this line and define it as students index which is inside and one more thing that i want to do here is i will rename this to capital letters and write in camel case format okay so now here is inside slash components slash students index dot view dot default let's save that and everything should work fine let me just remove these and in our students dot students index dot view let's define a new template for view and let's also define the script no it's not this script javascript dot view and here what i'm what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna copy this whole div cut this whole div and paste that in our template save and maybe we need to remove this comments so this will be imagination links that we'll be using later and everything should work fine save that and okay we don't need the javascript part for now since we are only testing whether it's working or not and we need to define we need to call the students index view file let's save that and don't forget to run the java run the npm run dev or we can even run npm run watch so our javascript has been compiled and let's go ahead and check that on our browser so everything is working as usual and if you go ahead and inspect again we have that problem okay we have view and we have the students index component so since we haven't defined any data or methods here so this is empty for now so let's go ahead and define some data properties for in our vue.js file so for that let's go to the students index and in here i want to define a data property which is gonna be a function and it's gonna return an object so here what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna define a property called students which is gonna be an empty object and the next step that we'll be doing here is whenever the component is mounted what i want to do is i want to call the axios request here so axios is available globally uh, on every view component so we don't need to import that so i want to call the slash api slash students route and making some mistakes okay so this is gonna make the api request to slash api slash student and then what i'm gonna do is we'll receive a response and when i receive that response then what i want to do is i want to store that data in our students data property so this students is going to be response dot data is going to be the default and since the since we are using the resource api resources then uh, what is going to do is, is it is going to wrap our records in the data root element so for that what we need to do is we need to append one more data here so let's save that and let's go to the browser and reload once again everything is working as expected as usual so if you go ahead and check this student index then you can see we have a student object with a value of 50 items so each object having all the required records as you can see we have address class email id name phone number and section so everything is working fine so in order to display these data in the data table what we need to do is we need to loop through each of these so here what i'm gonna do is okay let's loop so v for students student in students and since we are using for loop then i, I need to specify a key 
so that will be student dot id and make sure to spell that correctly now what we need to do is we need to specify all of these properties here so this will be student dot name let me just copy this and this one will be section save that and let's go ahead and again reload our browser and everything should work as expected and as you can see we have a record students record being displayed here so everything is working properly now one more thing that is the created at since we are since okay we haven't we are not passing the created at in our api resource probably so in our student resource what we need to do is we need oh we also need the created at and let's format this properly so this will be this created at and what i want to do is i want to format this to date formatted date string maybe i just forgot what it was we'll just check it okay that's good so we can actually apply all of the laravel related stops here which will uh, which uh, we can manipulate and show it in the front end so this is quite good and now the only thing that we are here for is the pagination using view so for that what we need to do is we need to install a package called laravel view pagination so this is a npm package so for that let's go ahead and install this so laravel view pagination open our terminal okay let's create a new one npm install laravel view pagination and i'll be right back once this finishes installing so the laravel view pagination package has been installed successfully and the next step that we need to do is we need to register that component so let's go ahead and copy that in our app.js save that paste that and in order to use that component we can save this and in order to use that component what we need to do is we need to define this pagination and send the data and pagination function so here let's go to the students index and inside this div i'm going to paste that and our data will be students and on pagination change page we need to execute a function so this will be let's define a new function called get students and let's define that so this will be methods which is going to be a function and here i want to call a new function that is get students and i want to call this function in our get students method let's format that and on the mounted what i want to do is i want to call the get students method so now everything should work as expected so pagination we are sending the data as students since we have a student's data and on every pagination change page what i want to do is i want to call the get students i want to call the get students method and okay one more thing that we need to do is i think there's an error here we need to send a parameter of page which will be one by default and the methods is gonna be an object not a function and one more thing that is since we are paginating so what we need to do is we need to specify the parameter as page as you can see in here it's mentioned so on the method since we are using the get results it gets uh, gets a pa parameter of page so every time it calls the pagination change page is going to call the get results and send the pagination value so if the page is 2 then it will send the parameter as uh, parameter value is 2 and if the page is 3 then it will send the parameter value is 3 and i want to go to example results and page equal to this page so i need to call that here the so page will be page save that and in our student controller we also need to perform the pagination so this will be paginate 
and i want to i want to fetch 10 records at a time so let's go ahead and reload our browser everything should work fine and okay there's a problem on the pagination part let's go ahead and check out invalid prop type check fail for prop data expected object got array okay i found the bug so since we were doing response dot data dot data so that was a problem so what we need to do is we we only need to send the response dot data and everything else uh, will be done by this package so what we can do here is we can remove this extra line of data here and now if we go ahead and reload our browser everything should work as expected but we don't see any results so what's the problem we have a data of 10 oh, okay what we also need to do is now here we need to specify the students dot data like that and reload again so now everything should work fine and if i click on second page then the data are reloaded and without any page refreshes as you can see so the last thing that we need to do in this video is to change the pagination values depending on this value so let's go ahead and define the property here so the first thing that we need is a data property called paginate so this will be 10 by default and on our paginate select tag where's that okay we have that here so select what we want to do is we want to remodel this with the paginate let's save that and let's check it everything is working fine or not so we have view we have paginate which is 10 if i go ahead and change that to 20 that gets 20 so our v model is working fine so now what we can do is we'll be sending that paginate value to our api so here what we can do is let's send that paginate equal to paginate okay this paginate we need so we can actually use the request function here so let's go ahead and define that paginate value so we'll be receiving that in the request paginate property so if we don't get any value then we'll be using 10 by default and here now we can actually use this paginate so it will be 10 by default and if we whenever we change that from our view application that will make a new api request and then this value will be updated and according to that we'll get the student's record one more thing that we need to do is we need to watch for this paginate property where's that so whenever this paginate property changes we'll be executing another function so we need to watch for this paginate property so let's define a watcher and this is gonna be a function i think okay this is not gonna be a function this is a object so we are gonna watch for the paginate so whenever the paginate value changes we'll be executing the function called so what we want to do here is we want to fetch the students again so what we can actually do is we can all the get students method here so what it is going to do is uh, since we are watching for the paginate property so every time this paginate value changes then this get students function will be called and here what we are doing is uh, we are by default sending the page as one and since we have the well since we have the v model we, we are binding this with the paginate value so we don't need to send anything from here so this will be set by uh, set to 20 30 10 by default and according to that our data will be paginated so for on every change this will this function will be called and according to the according to that we'll get the 
records on our front end so now everything should work as expected so if we save and reload our browser now we are getting 10 records by default if i go ahead and go ahead and change that to 20 then i should see 20 records but it's not working here so we have a value of paginate as 20 and maybe this is not working okay i made a silly mistake here that is we need to append a ampersand here save that again and let's go ahead and reload our browser once again so the way i knew that error is because i checked on the network tab and the an ampersand was missing here so now again let's take it once again last time and if i go ahead and change that to 20 then we should see 20 records and yes everything is working fine so this much for this video so in the next part we'll be implementing the search feature so in this video we'll be working on implementing the search feature so whenever the user types in something uh, we'll be searching through multiple columns like the student's name email address phone number and we'll be also and we'll also be implementing the relationships searching through the relationships so uh, the user can also type the certain class in section and search for those uh, and search for those related students so let's go ahead to our visual studio code and define a property so search property so for that let's go to the script part and define a search variable which will be empty by default and let's model it in our input so which is okay let me just collapse these so our pagination part has been done and we also don't need this for now so this is the search so let's we model this with the search variable this is done save that and okay let's go ahead and reload our browser and see whether our v model is working or not so if i go ahead and so search is empty if i go ahead and type name then as you can see it is reflected here so everything is working fine and now what we need to do is in our get students model let's duplicate these and here what i want to send is i want to send a variable called q and then i want to send the search value on these parameters so we are sending the get request and here i'm sending the query so now let's go to our controller and let's receive that value so we can name that as search term will be request with the value of q and that will be empty by default and now what we need to do is i'll be using scopes here so defining a scope on the model and then calling that scope on the query so while we are querying we'll be using that scope to search through the database so let's go ahead to our model so student.php and define a function so scopes are generally uh, prefix with the va value scope and then the actual search term so in this case i'll be using search and this will receive two parameters the first is the query and the second is the term itself so we will be using that query builder to query through the, our database to so query through the students table so here what i want to do is the first thing that i want to do here is i want to wrap our search term with the percentage sign so that it will search for the similar names like the term and now the next thing that we need to do is i want to use the query and let's make a where request so where 
and we'll be passing a closer here now this but a function which is going to receive the query itself and I also want to use the term and here what I want to do is I want to search through the database query where the name is like our term and let's change this to multiple columns and okay I made a mistake so here we can also append or where since we are searching through multiple columns so or where I want to search through the email so the email is like this term and now let's also search through the address search through the phone number and in order to search through the relationships what we need to do is we can use or where has so or where has is gonna receive of uh, the first parameter which is the relationship name and the second parameter we are going to pass a function just like above so function this is going to re receive the query as a parameter and I also want to use the term and let's wrap this inside the brackets and here I want to run the query so now we are inside the relationship instance so inside the class model so here we can uh, append or where clauses like this so for now I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search through the name so the name of the class I'm gonna search the class name the name is like this search term and okay we need the semicolon here and I'm gonna append one more so what I'm gonna do is I'll just copy this remove this and I want to search through this section as well so or where has the section function use function query use term the name is like this term so this should work fine let's save that and so this is going to return so query where so this is going to actually uh, automatically return all the values that this executes and in our students controller now what we can do is we can actually call these query scope by its name since we defined it as scope search so we can actually call the search function and let's pass that search term so i'm using the trim function here so what it is basically gonna do is it will remove all the white spaces from our term and then so, and it will uh, and we'll pass that term to our search scope so now let's go ahead and see that in action in our students or index dot view what we are doing is we are calling the get student function and in here we are passing a query as query uh, we are passing a query parameter with the value of this search so whatever we have in our input search we'll be passing that in our query parameter and in our students controller dot php we are receiving that parameter uh, as a search term and then passing that to a scope so this is this scope is a function and this function is being executed in our model where we are running the query so query where the name is like this term or where the email is like this term so the receive parameter or the address or phone number or the class so we are searching through class relationship here so we need to define the relationship class and section as you can see we have the class and section so this is gonna search through the class and section so respect uh, class and section table and it is gonna search the name where the name is like the received parameter and then it is going to re uh, return all the records automatically so we don't need to do anything uh, returning the, the returning part is all automatically done so now what we can do is let's go ahead in our browser so we have one more thing uh, we need to implement and 
I want to show you the network tab here. So if I type in something and enter, okay, this is not going to do anything. So what we need, one more thing that we need to do here is whenever we make any changes to our search term, where's that? So whenever we make any changes to this search value, then we want to run a function. So in order to run that function, we need uh, we need to watch through this search property. So for that, let's go to our watchers. So we have a watch implemented for the paginate. The next one is for the search. So the, the way we define a watcher is by actually calling the property name. So this is going to receive the value, but we don't need that. So here what we will be doing is we'll again call the get students function. So whenever the, uh, any value in the search property changes, then we'll be calling this get student function and it is going to execute this API call. And then when they when we receive the response, then it is going to assign those values to the students property that we have defined in our view. So this should work fine. And we have an error here. I don't know what kind of error is this. Module not found error count resolve view editor bridge in C users. Okay. So we had an error where I, when I was writing the function, then it imported an FUNC function package, or I don't know what is this, but we need to remove this. And yeah, let's save that and everything should work fine. Now let's go ahead and reload our browser. And now when I type suppose MR, then it is going to search through all the fields and return the matching values. So let's test some more things. So if I type in Adam, then it is going to returning the query return uh, query searching through the email values return that match with the email field. Let's type 2504041. That's working. Let's type 585. Working. And also, let's also check out the relationship searching. So if I type in class 1, then okay, we are getting all the values that belong to class 1. And let's also type section A. And we are getting all the values of section A. Okay, that's good. That's working fine. So our search functionality is working fine. And one more thing that I want to implement here is since we are making so many requests to the server while we are searching through the relationships or while we are searching through the data tables. So what I want to do here is we can actually do one thing that is we can use bind that with a value called vmore.lazy so what it, is, it will basically do is if i go ahead and now if i go ahead and, and type in class one then any change in the input field will make a api, API request so if i type in now if i type enter then it is going to make a make an api request instead of making an API request on every keystroke. So this drastically reduces the amount of requests we send to the server. And yeah, that's one of the optimization that we can implement. So this was it for this video. And in the next video, we'll be working on filtering the data, filtering the students by class and section. So stay tuned for that and I'll see you in the next one. So in this video, we'll be implementing the filter function, so filtering by a class and section. So what we want to do here is we want to display all of the classes available in our database. So for that, what we need to do is we need to query the classes table and display the classes uh, using for each loop. So let's define the routes and all the necessary things that we, that we need to do. So let's go ahead and do that. So for that, let's open up our Visual Studio code and let's go ahead and in order to display these classes let's go ahead to our api.php and let's define a new route with 
classes and we have classes controller and we need to go to the index so let's go ahead to the classes controller go to the let's create a function called index and here let's define the resource for class as well so api resource for class so php artisan make resource classes resource that's done let's let's go to this and okay we don't need to do anything here so now let's query all of the classes so classes classes all and return classes resource collection classes let's save that now let's go to the okay let's go ahead and check that in our browser so if i go ahead and type in classes then we should get all of the classes so we need to call the api and then classes so we are getting all the classes here so let's go ahead in our students index dot view and let's define a new property called classes which will be empty by default and what we want to do is on the mounted function we will be calling the axios dot get to slash api slash classes and then what we are gonna do here is we'll be receiving the response and what we want to do here is assign the receive values to this classes so that will be response dot data dot data let's save that and if we go ahead and reload our browser check the view tab we have classes and the object is empty why is that so mounted we are calling the api slash classes then response okay let's risk console.log the response so we are getting data dot data we have array of five okay it's working fine actually it took a bit of time to load that so again if you go ahead and reload and as you can see we have five arrays with their respective values so now what we can do is since we have these classes let's go ahead in our select tag for classes and let's loop through each of these so option v4 class in classes and we also need to call the key here so the key will be class dot id and okay we are still getting this error i don't know why unexpected keyword okay let's remove that keyword and keep that as item before item in classes and okay we also need to change that to item the value will be item dot id and we need to bind that and the actual output should be item dot name so let's save that and go ahead and reload our browser everything should work as expected so yes it takes a bit of time to make that api request so now we have class one two three four five and we also need to define one more property that is the selected class so if i go ahead and select class one then i want to wire model or well not wire model but v model this uh, to a certain property so that uh, i should know which class has been selected and then depending on that i would query the sections table so for that let's go ahead to our students index view and define one more property that is 
selected class and this will be now by default and let's we model this in our option tag so we have that here so select we model this with the selected class and now if i go ahead and reload my browser pull this up student index we have selected class is null and if i select class one then we, as you can see we have selected class as id since we have the value of id of class id according to that we get the we get the value assigned to this selected class and we also need to define a watcher so whenever i change that selected class so whenever that selected class changes then i want to make a query or i want to execute a function so here let's define this uh, watcher for selected class and we have a function which is going to receive the value and here also we are going to call the get students property since uh, whenever any value changes uh, whenever the value of the selected class changes then we want to query the get students uh, then we want to query the database and get all the students belonging to that certain class so i hope you get the idea and now what we will be doing here is i'll send another query parameter of selected class and this will be this selected class so i'll be implementing this first and then uh, it will be same for the selected section as well so let's save that and now we have this selected class value in our student controller so here we have the selected class which will be request selected class and now what we can do is whenever there's a value so we can actually append when so whenever a certain value is set so if this selected class value has a certain value selected class variable has a certain value then we will be querying the database so we can actually pass the when condition parameter here when conditional clause so whenever a certain value like selected class is set then we want to execute that query so here what we'll be doing is we'll be passing that selected class value so when this selected class is set then you want to call a function which is going to get the parameter called query and we also need to use the selected class since we are we'll be using that selected class to query our database and here we need to wrap this inside brackets and we'll be executing the function where we'll be using the query and use the where clause here where the class id so here we are inside the students model students table and we'll be querying the database where the class id is equal to this selected class okay and since we are here what we can also do is let's copy this selected class and define the same for the selected section as well and in here we can duplicate this query and when the selected section is set then what we want to do is we also need to query the section id so where the section id is this selected section and now let's go to our browser and reload okay we have an error here and we don't see any error here but we probably need to debug what's going on and the reason we are not getting any data here is because since we have a selected class of null so what we can do here is instead of passing a null value let's pass an empty string so now it should work i don't really know the exact reason for this but this will pass an empty string to the api request here so this will be an empty string and 
in our student controller this will be set to null maybe that's the mechanism that's going on here so now if we go ahead and reload our browser everything should work as expected so now we need to implement the dependent drop down so when i select class one then i should see the sections of class one yeah i should see the sections of class one so let's go ahead and in our students index dot view what we are doing is we are watching for the selected class that means let's also define a new property called selected section section that will be empty by default and also define a new property called sections which will be empty by default so since we have defined these two properties we also need to create an api to make the request to the sections so we have we need to define sections so we will we want to get all the sections of a specific class and let's go to sections controller index so we have that sections controller okay we don't have maybe we have section controller so that's inside section controller okay for some reason this is not working so go to the section controller and define a function called index and we can get the class id using the request object so let's define as class id and we want to get all the sections where the class id is this class id let's get these and let's return okay let's also define a api resource for section sections resource so we have that and we don't need to do anything here as well so we'll just return uh, sections resource collection with these sections save that and we need to make api call from the view part so for that so on change of a selected class what i want to do here is okay since we have in the get students so what we can do here is we'll be passing the selected section as well so did we do the v model part maybe we didn't okay we need to make the api request to get all the section first and then we'll do the v model part later so whenever the selected class changes then i wanna make a xeos request to slash api slash sections and i also need to pass the class id so that will be class okay we don't need the and here we can actually send the class id like this with a question mark will be equal to this dot selected class and then we get a response where i want to store those in my sections property which will be inside response dot data dot data let's save that and on the section controller so we have index so this will so whenever we hit this api route so slash api says sections and with the value of class id is this selected class then we hit this api.php on the api slash section which will go to section controller at their index function and inside section controller what we are doing is we are grabbing the class id so if there's nothing let's keep that to null 
and we want to get the sections where the class id is this class id and get and then we are returning a section resource collection with these sections and then what we are doing is on the students index dot view we are assigning those values to the sections property so now if we go ahead and reload our browser and let's inspect the students index so for now we have sections object as empty and when i go ahead and change that to class 2 then we have selected classes 2 and we have selected section as empty but okay we also have the sections as empty that shouldn't be the case selected section is empty okay that's fine but we have sections so let's debug what's actually happening so we are getting axios.get api slash sections where class id is this selected class and then we get the response so let's console dot log the response say that and let's check out our console so if i select class 4 then we are getting a 500 internal server error so if we ask last sections question mark class id equal to 4 500 internal server error request failed so i had an import error on my api.php i didn't import the section controller so for that i was getting an error so what i did was in order to debug this what i did was in our students index i made a call to slash api slash sections with the class id of this selected class and the response i just console.log the response and in this section controller in order to check whether i was getting the uh, correct class id or not i just returned the class id and now if i go ahead and reload the browser and select class one then i should see data with the value of one here so this is now actually working fine so i just properly imported the section controller in my api.php now what we can actually do is instead of returning the class id we can query the sections and then return the sections and on the students index dot view instead of console logging this what we can do is we can assign these values to the sections so save that and once again reload the browser now if i if we go ahead and check the view tab on the students index we have empty object for sections so if i go ahead and check check the class 2 then we get two arrays two uh, two items for sections so one is section a and the another one is where is that so section b so now what we can do is we can loop through these in our select tag for sections so let's loop through option v for section and sections we need to pass the key as section dot id the value will be so we need to bind this the value will be section dot dot id and in order to display the actual value what we need to do here is we need the section dot name so let's save that and again go ahead and reload our browser to so select class 2 then as you can see we have section a and b for class 3 so one more thing that we can do here is if we don't select any class then we can actually hide this so v if we don't have any selected class i think this should work fine so if the selected class is selected class has a certain value then we want to show 
this whole div otherwise we'll be hiding it so save that and reload our browser so now we are only seeing the filter by class option if i go ahead and select class 2 then we see the option for section so if i we can now again select the section to in order to filter by section so let's do one more thing let's uh, v model this to the selected section so we have already defined the selected section property here so this is to in order to filter the student by class and section so once we once the student select a certain section then we will be watching this selected section property and depending on that we'll be making api request so we have defined the selected section property in the data so let's watch for the selected section so this will be similar to the selected class but so this will be selected section and this will execute a function which is going to receive a value which we don't need so here what we are going to do is we are only going to run the get student property and inside get student what we'll be doing is we'll be passing the selected section so the selected section will be this selected section and this will be this will go to the student controller and here we have selected section where the we'll be getting the value through the request object and when this value is selected then we want to query our database our students table where the section id is this selected section so now everything should work as expected so if i go ahead and select class one then all the students belonging to class one are displayed and we don't have any class belonging to we don't have any student belonging to section b so if i select section a then all the data should be retained and if i go ahead and sec uh, select section b then we should get an empty array so yeah this one's working fine so this much for this video and i hope you like the content and in the next one we'll be talking about the multi-select feature so selecting multiple records and deleting these records so uh, bulk delete and single delete and also showing your toaster notification that the records were deleted so all those features we'll be discussing in the next one so stay tuned and i'll see you in the next one so in this fourth part of our view data table series we'll be implementing features like selecting multiple columns so i can select these uh, records and then with these uh, i can perform operations like delete and export so in this uh, part we'll be implementing uh, selecting multiple records and deleting those multiple records in the another part we'll be discussing about exporting these so let's start by deleting single records from the database so for that let's open up our visual studio code and we have a delete button here for every single record so, so we have a button and on click what i want to do here is delete okay, let's define a function called delete single record and let's pass in the student id and let's go ahead and define that function so we have selected section i think these are watchers so on the methods let's define that here delete single record so this will receive the student id and here we need to we also need to define a api route so let's go ahead in our api.php and this will be of type delete and we'll be using route model binding so route delete student slash student and here i want to go to student controller class and the function that i want to call is destroy since we are deleting a single record and let's also define uh, another prefix called delete so you can actually do whatever you like 
whatever you are comfortable with so now let's go to the student controller and define a function called destroy so here we'll be getting that student and what i want to do here is let's return the student id in order to check whether okay let's just send the id in order to check whether our code is working or not so now in our api in our students index dot view what we can do is we can make an api request to axios dot delete and our route will be slash api slash student slash delete slash and the id of the student so this will be student id and then what we can do is so since we are we'll be getting the response here what i want to do is let's just console.log this value console.log response dot data save that and we have the npm run watch running and now if i go ahead and reload our browser enter control shift i to open up our inspector to inspect we open up our vector yeah website inspector and now let's open up the console so we have some property error can ready property function of undefined okay that's a bootstrap error so let that be and now if i go ahead and click on delete then i'm getting the id of one if i go ahead and click on delete for another button then i'm getting the id of two so our code is working fine and the only thing that we need to do here in our api in our student controller.php is we can actually delete the student so student delete and here what i want to do is i'm going to return a response with no content so this will send the status as 200 and the body will be empty so here what we want to do is when we execute that function when we get that response then i want to fetch the students again in order to refresh our table so save that and now if we go ahead and reload our browser and if i click on delete for the first record then this should be deleted from the database and the data table should be refreshed so yeah our code is working fine so it would be a nice feature if we could uh, give our use feedback to the user that the student was deleted successfully so for that what we'll be doing is we'll be using a package called view toast notification so for that let me just copy this code and open up in our terminal open up our terminal and i'll just install this package and i'll be right back so the package has been installed successfully as you can see and in order to use this what i need to do is i need to import that from the package from the npm module in our app.js so we have that here and let's paste that and we also need okay we need to import our default theme so let's copy and save that as well and we don't need anything else here so this is fine so in order to use this uh, toaster notification what we can do is uh, let's go to our visual studio code and when we get the response then here what i want to do is this dot toast dot success and here i want to pass a message that says student deleted successfully let's check whether this is fine okay this looks good let's save that and now if we go ahead and reload our browser and when i delete a single record we are getting an error that unknown type error cannot be probably success of undefined what's the error here okay uh, i forgot to specify one more thing that is view.use view toast which will be in our app.js so here 
we could we need to define this and one more thing that is i want to specify here i want to specify a position here so for that let's go ahead and pass in an object the position that i want to place is on the top right save that and now one last time if we go ahead and reload our browser and when i click on delete then we get a toaster notification that the student was deleted successfully okay this looks good so our single file deleting feature is working fine single record deleting feature is working and our next step is i want to implement this selecting multiple checkboxes from our data tables so let's go ahead in our student index dot view and define a new property so on that property i want to store all the ids of the students all the ids of the checked students for that let's define an array or maybe you could also define an object but array will also work fine so we have an array checked array so we'll be storing all the ids of the students that are checked and let's wire model this with our input type of checkbox so here the value will be student dot id and let's remodel this with our checked property and notice one more thing that Vue.js is so awesome that whenever we remodel any input type of checkbox with an array then whatever uh, we check through in the loop so let me just show you what's what it will actually do here so let me open the view dev tools and open up student index so i have a checked array which is empty uh, currently so now if i go ahead and check this array okay this is a problem because it should be we should bind it so we should specify that colon so now if i go ahead and reload again and open up the dev tools we have a check with an array md array if i go ahead and click on this item then uh, we you can see that we have an array which is with the id of five if i click again then the array increases so it automatically performs the updating of the array whenever we select these check boxes so our v model property is working absolutely fine and now what i want to do is whenever i select on any of the checkbox then i want to show this button with these options so for that let's go ahead on the checked with checked button here and i want to show this so we'll be using v if if the length of the checked array is greater than zero so save that and now since we our checked array is empty then we won't see the checkbox and if i select on any of the item then the checkbox is visible and see as you can see since we are using uh, javascript so there's no any uh, request to the server uh, which uh, basically which generally happens in the live wire so view is much faster and efficient uh, in terms of these uh, kinds of operations in comparison to live wire so now here what i want to do is i want to show the count of the checked items so that will be checked dot length and whenever i select these items then the count of that then the counter also increases so that's kind of cool and now what i want to do is i want to delete the items that are checked so for that when i click on delete then i want to execute a function so whenever i click on this link then i want to execute a function called delete records and since this uh, this is an a tag what i also want to do is i want to prevent the default behavior of the href tag 
so this will execute the delete records method and so let's go ahead and define that function so in our methods i'm going to define another function called delete records so here i want to make an api request so that will be exios dot delete i want to make an api request to slash api slash students slash pass destroy since we are deleting multiple records and here i want to pass the ids of the students so i can actually pass the array and then we get a response so if the response dot status is equal equal to 204 then what i want to do is i want to show a message so let's show a toaster notification dot success that selected students were deleted successfully and we also need to execute the this get students method here as well so let's save that and let's go ahead and define the api slash student slash mass destroy api so in our api.php we can actually copy this so api students mass destroy and we get an array of students so which i want to go to mass destroy function so let's save that and go to the student controller and define that function and we get an array of students so here what i want to do is i'll just write a write a log about the receive students we can actually return it but okay it's fine what i'll do is i'll just go to the storage the logs and laravel dot log let me just clear everything from here save that and okay since we are only logging these students so i want to i'm doing this thing because uh, whenever we send an array from our parameters then what it will do is in it will convert it it won't actually send the array but will it will send the values as strings so let me just show you what i'm actually trying to say so whenever i select multiple items let me just select three items and when i click on delete then if you go ahead now into our laravel.log then you can see we are only getting five six seven as as value of string type so this is not an array so we get a string type value so we need to convert this to an array type and then delete these delete the students uh, which has these ids from our database so for that what we need to do is we need to convert so we have a function so we have a function called explode that takes the separator as the first argument and the students the, the string as the second argument and we want to store that in uh, an, in a variable called students array and the way we delete these records is by calling student where key is this array and this is uh, actually where condition so this will search through the students table where the key matches with this students array so the ids that exist on this student array will be fetched and then we want to delete those records so now those students are deleted and let's send an http response of no content so now everything should be should be working fine 
so in our api.php what we are doing is we are actually uh, executing a, we are defining a new api for students must destroy and we get the students as a parameter which goes to student controller and must destroy so here what we are doing is we get the student array as an string as a string of comma separated values then we are converting that to an array and then we are querying the students model where the key matches with this student's array and then delete those records and then we are returning a response of no content so no content means we are st sending a status of 204 and then in our students.index view what we are doing is we are making an api request to uh, api request to api student mouse destroy and passing the checked array and then we get the response if, so if the response dot status is equal equal to 204 then we show a toaster notification that selected students were deleted successfully and then we are fetching the students again so if the status is not 204 or if there's something another message like if we get a response of 500 then we can show another message saying that something went wrong and we can actually show the error message so for now everything should work fine as i've already tested this so let's go ahead and test it again so we have three records so the first one is enabled so keep that in mind so take care of that so if i go ahead and delete this then we see that these students were deleted successfully so we are still seeing the which checked value here which checked button here so for that what we need to do is whenever we get a success message success response then what i want to do is i want to reassign that checked array to an empty array so now everything should work fine so if i go ahead and select two records and delete then those records are deleted from the database we have uh, we reassigned the checked array to an empty array and everything works absolutely fine so now the next thing that i want to do here is when i select so when i check or uh, check the this array this checkbox then i want to select all of the records from this table so for that what we need to do is let's go ahead in our so we have that in our input type of checkbox so this is the one that we need to work on so let's we model this with the with a new property called select page so when this when the checkbox is checked then that value will be set to true and if it is not checked then that value will be set to false so let's go ahead and define the select page property so this will be false by default and if you go ahead and check that in our browser so we have select page as false and if i select this then this value changes to true as you can see here so now when the select page value changes so in order to track that we need to define a watcher so let's define a watcher for the select page so whenever this value changes then what i want to do is so if this value is true then what i want to do is i want to loop through the students so this dot students dot data dot for each maybe this is the actual syntax for for each then the for each student what i want to do is i want to push the student id to our checked array so here in order to push the checked student id to our checked array we have the push function so here i want to push the student id to our checked array so we are looping through the data and then we are pushing the array checked array. we are pushing the student id to the checked array so let's go ahead and test this out so now if i select this as you can see all the records from this page are selected and when i uncheck this then what i want then i want to uncheck all of the records so for that we have else condition so when the 
this value is false then we will be executing the else condition in that case i want to empty that array so this dot checked will be an empty array so now let's go ahead and save that and reload our browser again now if i select this then all the records are selected and if i again select this then that value will be so this value will be set to false and will be will have an empty array we have will have an empty checked array so yeah everything is working perfectly fine so our next step is what we're gonna do here the next step will be okay one last final thing that i want to do here is when i select this item then i want to show a menu that you are selecting currently selecting this much of items and you want to select all and when i click on select all then i want to select all of the items so uh, for now as you can see we are not selecting all the items we are only selecting 10 items so i'll be implementing that feature so let's start working on it so in order to show a message that we are currently selecting this number of items let's go ahead in our visual studio code and let me show where the code is where that part is so here we have this div so i want to wrap that inside another div and okay maybe we don't need to wrap this so i want to show this div if and only if the select page property is true so let's go ahead and reload and when i select these items then i don't see that message but when i select this checkbox then i can see then as you can see we are seeing this you are currently selecting all 10 items and here i want to show the i count of the items that are being selected so for that we could use the length of the checked array so this okay we don't need the, this checked dot length let's save that okay this is not checkbox this is checked dot length and let's load once again and as you can see we are seeing you are currently selecting all 10 items then I also want to implement this feature so if we click on you have select you are currently selecting 10 items or 10 items okay we have selected 10 items do you want to select all so when i click on this button then i want to show this message and when i click on the select all then i want to show this message okay so for that it got a bit of mismatch maybe okay we also need to define one more property that is select all so when i click on select all then i want to turn the then i want to make the select all value to true so if the select all property is set to true then i want to show that you are going to be selecting all then okay we i want to show all the values of the all the i want to show the count of the all the items so for that i'll just implement that later but here it will be v else so if the select all is empty or if the select all is set to false then i want to show this v else condition and i want to show all of these only if the select page is set to true so for that let's wrap that inside a div and okay we don't need that since you have a div in here i can actually use that v if select page so if select page is set to true then we'll be executing this function and if the select all is set to false then we'll be showing this message and if we, if the select all is set to true then we'll be showing this message so now let's go ahead and test it out so if i select these items so sell, uh, if i select the checkbox then you can see that you have selected all 10 items 10 items you want to select all 25 and when i click click on the select all so we have that where's that 
okay we have selected 10 items do you want to select all okay we have that here so what i want to do here is at click dot prevent i want to execute a function called select all records so we can define a function for select all since our vi already have a property named select all so let's save that and define that function let's define that here select all records and here what i want to do is i'll just change the value of select all to true so what it will do is it will change the value of select all to true and the message that will be showing here will change so now only thing that we need to do is we need to show the count of the items and also select all of the items in our data table so for that so the next step that i want to do here is i want to show a total total of the student's item here so you are currently selecting so this is fine this will display the length of the currently current page so total records of the current page but what if we, what if we want to get all the records all the count of the records that we are that we actually have on the database so for that what i'm going to show here is i'll be showing the students index and in here as you can see we have the students we have the students property and in that we have meta data so in here as you can see we have uh, quite a few properties here so current page from last page links page per page two and we have a value we have a property called total so we can actually use this total variable on the total in order to display the total records so you have uh, selected in here what i want to do is i want to display the checked dot length instead of 10 and do you want to select all so instead of 25 what i want to do is i want to define the students dot meta meta dot total you go ahead and check that so students dot meta dot total okay so let's save that and when we click then we want to select all the records and okay this should work fine so we are only updating the total count so if i go ahead and select that you have uh, selected 10 items do you want to select all 41 so the only thing left to implement here is when i click on select all then i want to select all of these records that have been displayed so all the paginated values also so now the next step that we uh, that i want to do here is i want to define a new api so let's go ahead and define a new api saying students all which will go to student controller and let's define a new function called all students so basically what this api will do is it will return only the ids of the students so we'll be returning only the ids of all the students and then assign that those ids to the checked array so i hope you get the idea so in here what i'll be doing is i'll define a new function called all students and then here i'll just return student and i want to pluck the id this should work fine so now if we go ahead in our students index.view so when i click on select all records then what i'll be doing is i'll be making an api request so where's that select all records we set the select all to true and instead of first making the select all to true let's make an api request axios dot get to slash api slash students slash all and then we get a response so let's side dump the response Response dot data. So let's go ahead and test that in a browser. So when I click on select all, then okay, we need to select all. And as you can see, we are getting all the IDs of the students. Then students, 
that are available in our database now what we want to do here is we want to assign these values to our checked array the response dot data will be this dot checked equals response dot data and then i want to set the select all to true so let's save that and see whether this works or not according to our assumptions this should work so if i select this then the 10 records are selected and if i click on select all then we can see we are currently selecting all 41 items and we have the checked array of 41 and if i click on page 2 then the state is maintained all over our pages so this is really really cool so now uh, what we can do is so we have seen this uh, we, we have already implemented the selecting all 10 20 41 items so if i click on again click on it so the checked array gets empty so i want to show a small bug here so as you can see when i click on this then you are currently selecting all 10 items so here what i want to do is when i uncheck that so that is in the watch page of select page maybe so here what i want to do is i want to reassign the checked array to an empty array and then i want to set the select all to false save that and now i select this i select the 10 items and click on select all all these 41 items are selected and i uncheck it and again if i check it then you have selected 10 items you want to select all so this is working fine and i want to show one more bug so if i'm selecting so if i'm selecting three records and then when i go ahead and select the checkbox to select all the records then as you can see it should select actually 10 items but we are currently selecting 13 items so the ids that we selected earlier got repeated again so in order to prevent this what we can do is let's go ahead to our select page and if so here what i want to do is i want to reassign the checked array to an empty array and this should work fine so let's go ahead and reload our browser and when i select these three items and select this checkbox then you have selected 10 items you're going to select all so this is working fine and one more thing one last thing that i want to do in this video is so since i'm selecting 41 items here and while i'm selecting these items what if i go ahead and delete this item from our record so let's check out the bug so if i click on this then the item got deleted from our database but we have the checked array of 41 so what i want to do is i want to remove that id from our checked array so in order to do that uh, let's go to our visual studio code while we are deleting the single record then what i want to do here is if the record gets deleted then what i want to do here is i want to assign the checked array to this dot checked dot filter so i want to filter the all of the ids in our array and i want to only keep the items where the id is not equal to the student id so this should work so what we are doing basically doing here is we are filtering through all of the items from our checked array and only keeping the ids where the id is not equal to this student id so the final result that we'll be getting here is we'll be remove, removing the student id that we deleted from our database so now let's go ahead and save that reload our browser let's select these 10 items and click on delete so as you can see we have you have already maybe you have noticed this so you have selected 10 items earlier we have nine and the total also got reduced by one so this is working fine and 
maybe a few things that we need to implement this so this video is getting quite lengthier but i, would, I don't want to implement the, that on the other video i would just want to implement it here so that is the confirmation message so when i click on this like delete this or when i click on this delete then i want to show a confirmation message that is are you sure you want to delete this and then when i click on ok then only i want to delete that record so for that let's go to our visual studio code so in our visual studio code when i click on delete single record here what i want to do is on click i want to confirm are you record and along with this i also want to uh, specify another parameter that is event dot stop immediate propagation so this is a uh, this is basically a javascript function so if i when uh, when i click on this confirm button and when i click on ok then this function will be executed and it will stop the propagation execution of code after this line of code so anything after this so at the rate click won't be executed and if i click on okay when i click on okay then this function will be executed and when i click on cancel then anything after this code won't be executed so even dot stop immediate propagation is gonna do that so let me just copy this part so from here to here and paste that in our delete button as well so here let's just specify that here so let's save that and now if i go ahead and click on this then i can see uh, are you sure you're going to delete this record when i click on cancel nothing's going to happen and when i click on ok then that record gets deleted from our database so this uh, was quite a lengthy video the, uh, you like the content and in the next part we'll be implementing the sort functionality so in our previous video we discussed about deleting single records deleting multiple records uh, selecting multiple records from our table and also selecting all the records that we have on our database so in this video we'll be discussing about the sort functionality so sorting these records by multiple columns so before we get started i wanted to implement a small feature that i missed in the previous one that is whenever i select any record then i want to show a color of blue that is text color primary on the records that are selected for that let's go ahead to our visual studio code and in here i want to define a function called okay let's define that here so i want to define a function called is checked which will receive a student id and here what i want to do is i want to return this dot checked dot includes so includes will check whether a certain record exists on that array or not so here i want to check whether the this student id that we are sending from our as a parameter exists on our checked array or not so if that exists then this condition will return true and if that doesn't exist then this will return false and depending on that we'll be applying a class into our prime to our table table row so let's go ahead and in our table row i want to display i want to apply a class so i want to apply a class in our table row and the way we apply the class is by using the class binding property so the class will be true if in our is checked function so i need to pass the student dot id so okay so if this condition is true then i want to apply a class of table primary so this is a bootstrap class so if that condition is false then i don't want to apply any of any class so the logic behind this is if the if the array consists of this student id then i want to apply the class of table primary and if it doesn't consist of that student id then i don't want to apply anything so let's save that and go ahead and refresh our browser and when i select any of the classes then you can see whichever class i select then that records color changes to blue so primary color so this is uh, one of a small feature that we can add so let's start by so the next thing that we'll be doing in this video is to apply is to sort these records so first let's go ahead and 
define two icons for each table that is the up arrow and the down arrow so whenever we select that arrow then we'll be toggling that sort order so let's go ahead to our table headers and in here i'll be defining two spans one for the up arrow and one for the down arrow and we and the code for defining an upper arrow is ampersand u a r r and for the down arrow is ampersand d a r r so i'll just copy this whole part and paste that on email and also for created at save that and let's see how it looks like so we have these arrows and now i also want to change these static headers to links so what i'll do is i'll just make an href tag and i'll just quickly replace these wrap this with href links so the idea behind this is whenever i click on this link then i want to toggle the sort order so the next step here is to define some properties so we'll be defining two properties that is sort direction and sort field so the sort direction will be ascending descending and the sort field will be the actual sort field that we have here like the phone number or address so for that let's go ahead and define sort direction so we'll be keeping the uh, few defaults here so the, let's keep the sort direction as descending and the sort field to be created at and now what we want to do is we'll be making an api request by passing these two values as well so we'll be manip manipulating the view later so for now we'll be sorting the data along along with this with this value so we'll be sorting this data with this value so let's go ahead to our students get students property and here i want to pass those fields so those values so sort direction will be this sort direction so i'll just copy that and the sort field will be this sort field and we don't need this so now this will make an api request along with all these uh, along with the with all the all of these parameters so now in our api.php okay in our student controller.php where we have this index let's go ahead and grab these values so the sort direction will be request sort direction so let's keep the default value as descending here as well and the sort field will be the request sort field and this will be created at by default and now when we are paginating and searching then what i want to do here is order by the sort so here we need to pass ascending or descending so this will be sort direction and the actual field is sort field so now this data will be sorted so here we'll be appending the order by query builder so the first parameter will be the sort field so we want to uh, pass in the field that is created at updated at all the fields that we have on the database and the next one is the sort direction so now this will so for in this case our data will be sorted in descending order by created at field so let's go ahead and check that so if we go ahead and check that in our network tab as you can see we are making an api request to the student with the value of page as one paginate of 10 query of empty query selected class is empty selected section is empty the sort direction is descending and the sort field is created at so everything is working fine the only thing left here is to manipulate that value depending on the link that we select so the next step that we'll be doing here is whenever i click on any of these fields so if i click on student's name then i want to sort student by his or her name i mean yeah, then we want to sort the student by the student's name and we also need to toggle these toggle the order so when i click on this i want to execute a function so for that let's go ahead to our student index.view and in here let's define a function for the students.name so here let's define the hash and at click dot prevent i want to execute a function called change 
sort and here i'll be passing the name of the field that i want to sort for so in this case i want to sort by student's name so we have the name as the column in the student's table so i'll be passing the name and let's go ahead and define this function so in our methods let's define a new function that is change sort and this should be dynamic so this will be field and here what i want to do is i want to change the sort field to field and then what i want to do is i want to get the students again so don't forget to specify the this dot get students so let's save that and now since i've only ex implemented that function for the student's name then we should sort the data tables by student's name and in ascending and in descending order so remember the default is descending order so if i click on student name and you can see the students are sorted in descending order by student's name so here what i want to do is i want to implement a few more if conditions so let me just cut that and i want to check here so if this dot sort field is equal equal to the field that we are getting as a parameter so the idea behind this is if the sort field that we are that we have in our data property is equal to the field that we are receiving as a parameter then in that case i only want to change the order so toggle the order so if so we can use actually is term and ternary operator so if this dot sort direction is equal equal to ascending then i want to change that to descending otherwise i want to change that to ascending so if the sort field is not equal equal to the field that we are receiving as a parameter then in that case i want to apply the sort field as the actual field and in the end we are executing the this dot get students so we will fetch the students again so now if i go ahead and reload the browser and then when i click on this get students so if i click on student name then it should be toggleable so in this case it is in descending order so it should be changed to ascending order and then the data should be sorted in ascent uh, sorted by student name in ascending order before now it is descending so if i click again okay, nothing's happening here what's the problem sort direction is equal to descending on sort field is name maybe we have some problem here so if this dot sort field is equal equal to sort field this dot sort direction is equal equal to ascending asc then i want to change that to descending otherwise that will be ascending i forgot to mention one more thing that i want to assign this to the this dot sort direction so if the sort direction is ascending then we'll assign this dot sort direction to descending otherwise ascending will be applied okay so let's save that and this should work fine now so let's go ahead and click on it so now the data is or sorted in descending order if i click again the data is sorted in ascending order so this is working fine and i want to implement that on all of the fields so the only thing that's left here to do is i need to copy this whole part and paste it on all of the fields so i'll just multi-select these and okay i made a mistake let's copy all of these and paste that so this i only need to change the field here so the field will be email this will be address this will be phone number and this will be created at so this should work perfectly fine so if i go ahead and sort it by email then we are seeing uh, we can see that the email is sorted in descending and if i click again uh, it is sorted by field as email and in ascending order so same for address phone number and created at so one more thing that i want to implement here is i only want to show the currently sorted arrow so if these data are sorted by student's name and in descending order then i only want to show this arrow and hide all of the others so for that we need to apply some if conditions so here i want to show this span if and only if the sort direction is equal equal to okay sort direction 
is equal to since this is the upper arrow so this will be descending and the sort field is name okay so i'll just copy this and paste it on every span and here i want to change this to email address phone number and create it at and the last thing okay we made a small mistake here so we need to append a double equal here since this is an if condition so i'll just multi select these and our direction is equal equal to descending and don't really know what's the problem here so this will be equal equal as well okay so now this is working fine let's format that properly and one more thing that i need to do here is i need to change this to ascending so this is the upper arrow save that and now let's go ahead and reload our browser so the default is created at in descending order so now if i click on student's name so now this is uh, the students are sorted in descending order by name if i click again they are sorted in ascending order by name if i click on email then we are only seeing this arrow so this is working absolutely fine and i want to implement a simple check in our controller as well so let's go to our controller so here what i want to do is for the sort direction and sort field i want to check if in array so let's define that and for the sort direction we'll be passing an array so in array for the sort direction we have ascending and we have descending so if we don't have a value of either ascending or descending so if we don't have that means we need to pass the exclamation so if we don't have a value of either ascending or descending in the sort direction that uh, what i want to do is i want to make a default value of descending or sort direction and for the the same thing applies for the sort field as well so we have multiple sort field sort fields so if we don't have a value of either name email address phone number that will be name so i'll just copy this and paste that multiple times so name email address number and the last one is so if the sort field doesn't have any values that belonging belongs to this array then we'll set this uh, default value as created at and the reason we are doing this is if someone goes to the apis checks the apis and then changes the value according to his own maybe he makes an api request instead of uh, making it from here he, may, he goes to the browser and makes an api request and tries to manipulate the values in that case we want to set a few default values so for that we are checking that so we don't get any errors while sorting sorting the data so for that reason we are setting a few defaults here so this should work perfectly fine now and let's give uh, one last check so if i click on student name the students are students are or sorted in descending order by their name and by address okay by phone number okay by created at everything is working fine here so this much for this video and in the next one we'll be implementing the exports with excel so in our previous video we discussed about the sort functionality using Vue.js. so in this video we'll be working on exporting the the data to an excel file so whenever I select these multiple records and click on export, then these data should be exported to an Excel file. So we'll be implementing that in this video. So for that, we'll be using a package called Laravel Excel. So let's go ahead and install that Laravel package. So I'll just open up the terminal and paste that. And I'll be right back once this finishes installing. So the package has been installed and the next step that we'll be doing here is let's go ahead and define a route. So that will be route get students export and we'll be using an array of students. So we'll be passing an array of students to this route in order to export that those records to an Excel file. 
so we have multiple ways of doing this uh, and i tried them and it's quite hectic to deal with laravel excel on vue.js since we need to uh, we need to implement everything on the front end side using vue.js so we either have to use a vue.js package or something like that and convert that to a json object and then export that data to excel file but i found a workaround for that so we'll be using so we'll, what we'll be doing is we'll be sending an array of we'll be sending an array of students data to the route and then uh, we'll on the controller side we'll export those array of ids so we'll uh, use the array of ids fetch the data from the database and then export that data to the excel file so whenever we make a request to the students export with the id of student we want to go to student controller class and let's define a function called export so we'll be defining that function later so first let's go ahead to our documentation and check out the exports and we'll be using from query since we, we need to query the database so for that first let's go ahead and create a new export file so php artisan make export so i'll be naming that students export hit enter so our export file has been created configuration file has been created in the exports folder inside app directory so here what we'll be doing is we'll be using exportable since we need to query the database so we need to use these traits and we'll also be using from query let me remove these and let's also import these and here we need the query function okay what we can do is let me just copy this public function query and we also need to use the constructor here which will be used to receive the array of students so what we need to do here is we need to query the student model query and we'll be querying the database using key so where key is so let me just define the constructor first function and we'll be receiving an array of students and we also need to define a protected student here which we'll be assigning in here in our constructor so this let's name that students so this students will be equal to the students array that we receive from our constructor and then what we'll be doing here is where key is since we are using the variable defined here so we need to use this keyword so this students and the next step that we'll be doing is since we have defined the export configuration file for our students let's go ahead to our student controller and define a new function here so we need to name our function as export and we are receiving the students value students ids here so the way we get the ids from the student is in the is in the form of string and not actually in the form of array as you have already seen in the deleting multiple records part what we did was we actually got a string of student id so we need to convert that to an array so we use explode function so what we'll be doing in this case as well is we'll be using the explode function to convert that array to uh to convert that student's string to an array so students array and then the way we export those file export those data to an excel file is by using this command so whenever we go to the export function what we'll be doing is we'll be returning a new students export and here we need to pass an array of students so that will be students array and let's name the file as students.xlsx so this will be an excel file so our backend part has been done now let's go to the students index dot view and in here what we want to do is whenever i click on the export button then i want to export that data to an excel file so let's navigate to the export button and in here what i'll be doing here is i'll be defining a new property called url and this url is actually dynamic so we'll be building this url whenever anything in the ui changes so whenever the user clicks on these multiple buttons then we need to generate the url where the students id are added to that url so we need to make it dynamic so this value will be dynamic so for that we are defining it that in a property and let's go ahead and define that url in our data so this will be url so this url property will be empty by default and what we want to do is whenever the array of the uh, whenever the value of the checked array changes then we want to update our url property as well so since we are 
selecting multiple records from our table and then we want to export these to our excel file then whenever the user clicks on these items then we also want to update the url value so for that what we need to do is we need a watch property defined for our checked array so for that let's go ahead to our watch uh, object and here we want to watch for the checked array so whenever that changes then what i want to do here is we don't need the value here but what i want to do here is i want to reassign the url property so this url will be since we have defined the url in our api.php so we want to go to slash api slash student slash export so let's go ahead and here define slash api slash student slash export and then what i want to do is i want to pass an array i want to pass the checked array here so that will be this dot checked so now if i save that and go ahead and reload the browser and now if i select two items then click on export then as you can see on the bottom left of the browser you can see the url been uh, been built up so we are exporting for the students id of 13 and 14 so these are two records and if i click on two more and then go ahead and uh, hover on the export button then as you can see we are exporting records for four students so this is working fine and so whenever i click on the export button then it is going to hit this api route so api students export with the value of this checked and this is not an array actually so we are converting that to an array in our api students controller.php so it hits this api route we get these uh, students ids in the form of string we convert that to an array and then we return a new students export we pass the students array here and with the name of student.xlsx and on the students export what we are doing is we are receiving that value in the students uh, on our constructor and assigning that to a variable called students which we defined on our export file and then we are running a query and uh, and we are searching through the students model where the key matches these students that we receive from the parameter so let's go ahead and save everything and now the final thing is the testing phase so with this what we can do is we can select all and then we are exporting the data of 10 students so if i click on export then as you can see we get a pop-up to save that file and i want to save that on the downloads folder so now if i go ahead and open it up this should work fine and as you can see these uh, records are exported successfully so this much for this series and if, if i feel like adding some extra features or if i find in uh, adding uh, feel, uh, if i find any features to be added here then i'll keep update uh, then i'll keep updating this uh, series in the future as well i hope you like the content and if you like it then do subscribe to the channel to stay updated and i'll be posting some more videos in the future stay tuned for that and i'll see you in the next one